We're used to seeing how technology makes film and TV more stylized and sleek, but here at South Park Studios, they're using their high-tech computer systems to achieve a more simplistic look. Let's head on down to South Park. This is South Park Studios, the fancy home of some very crude little kids. South Park has run for almost 200 episodes, collected three Emmys, and offended millions with its kids who say the darndest things. I'm afraid we're gonna have to let you go as our friend. You're just too lame. Lame, yes. We were like, wanted to make a little thing where kids are actually talking the way they do. That's Trey Parker. He and Matt Stone are the co-creators of South Park, and they write, direct, and do most of the voices. This all just started as one little three-minute film in college that Matt and I did. He's talking about the spirit of Christmas, a heartwarming tale about little kids, a snowman, and some Christmas magic. No, it's not cool. My sister in, in Minnesota put a hat on a snowman and it tried to kill her. Yeah, let's do it anyway. When we first started doing um, the cartoons in college, we're like, look, we'll just do this with stretch band. It just looks like total crap, but that was part of the joke. Was right. That it's just crappy, and that can be funny. One of Trey's college partners in crime was this guy. Eric? Nar, hey, welcome What's to South up, Park, man? man. This is Eric, the director of animation for all 13 seasons of the show, but he's also known as Butters. Is it true I've heard that you were the inspiration for Butters? <laughs> yeah. Trey, like, whenever he uh, writes, he calls on, you know, things that are in his life. And he's picking on me by basing butters on me. But I thought we were really getting along great. Yes, well, we weren't. And I asked Eric if, if he ever talked like that or, or if that was based on it. Yeah, and he said, no, I never talk like that. <laughs> <laughs> From student film to Emmy-winning TV hit, the core creative team hasn't changed, and neither has the look at first real and now simulated construction paper oh cutouts. Oh my God, Frosty killed Kitty! It really helps that their that they're construction paper because if you did a comedy show and you had a real little kid get hit by a bus and die, it probably wouldn't be that funny. Right. But the fact that you've just got this little piece of paper that goes dit, 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 like this, right. it's like you can laugh at it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Another reason they initially picked paper cutouts over hand-drawn animation that whole drawing thing. Neither of us could draw. Like, Trey could hardly draw, and I wasn't really a good artist either, too. So. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> Two aspiring animators who couldn't draw. Exactly, oh, yep. Yeah. And of course, that's why the characters are so simplistic. Animating with construction cutouts is also a little less time intensive than drawing each frame by hand. With these characters, they're almost like puppets. Mm -hmm. So you're cutting them out of construction paper, and once they're cut out and you have like a Cartman, then you have a Cartman and that's it. You don't have to keep drawing them every single frame. You can just move them. When execs saw the short, they jumped to order a pilot. And that first official South Park episode was done entirely with these little guys. This is all from the pilot. This is like the original South Park, it was a construction character. That was the hardest thing was organizing the pilot because it really got messy in there. Making these bagged up paper bodies move and mouth off wasn't easy. There was a camera up above us that was like up high, right. shooting down. And so we had to sit there and when a character talked, we had to take a picture and then you had to move the mouth and put the next mouth on and then take a picture. Yeah. And then you didn't want to bump anything because if you bumped everything, then you'd have to reshoot everything. You, you, didn't, you didn't even tape them down? Like some of them we, we taped down. But it gave us like this natural jiggle. That South Park animated jiggle. And that came from just accidentally messing up when you're changing. Exactly, yeah. In fact, some of these mouths even have coffee on them. If you look at them really closely, there's like coffee <laughs> on, the, on the mouths from Matt and Trey drinking coffee. So if I wanted to make Cartman here, Right now he's he's uh, he's talking. And he's farting fire. All right, and then here he's smiling. And each one of those he's is a, a new picture. There's actually a science to animating these mouthy kids. First, all the dialogue is broken down into basic phonetic units, like F or OO. These sounds are represented by standardized mouth shapes. Most animators use between eight and 12 to convey all their characters' dialogue. We went through a, an animation magazine and drew every kind of mouth for every kind of vowel and consonant you could do. And now we have this shorthand speak. You know, I sit there with Butters doing retakes, and I'm like, uh, no, number eight mouth, number three eyebrows. You know? How <laughs> many so, brows are there? 
The brows are more on a slider, you know, that basically can go anywhere from here to there to then change like this. Even with just 12 different mouth shapes, animating dialogue with paper cutouts proved tedious for the pilot. Is that the expert way that you do it? Yeah, that's how you have to do it. That's the easy way, huh? Yeah. It's also dangerous. So how many paper cuts did you get doing this? Many paper cuts, but I did get a big wound right there with an exact no, blade. Uh, did you really? Yeah, I was cutting around, and it slipped, and it went right, tore my skin right oh there. Oh my gosh, that's hardcore, dude. Yeah, yeah. And there was another major drawback. It took three months and a crew of eight to shoot the first 22-minute episode. Yeah, it basically took an entire summer um, when we were actually doing it with construction paper and, you know, click, click, and click, click. And so we knew immediately, if this got picked up, we're going to have to figure out another plan. To keep up with the demands of about 15 episodes a year, the creative team had to bag the paper and go with powerful computer apps. But nowadays, you said it's come a very long way from, you know, the humble beginnings. Can I even call it that? Yeah. All right. Yeah. And, the show's and evolved. The action that you see watching it nowadays mm -hmm. is, is a lot more complex it's as well. It's because of the, the ease of the computers, you know, the efficiency of the computers. Everything stays digital. We can do retakes really quickly and fast. Eric is going to walk me through a typical day at South Park, cleaned up a little to keep our family rating. So we have an extremely tight schedule here at South Park. Um, we have to do an episode probably in four or five days. So we start on a Thursday and we get a script. This has got to be unheard of that you guys would turn over a, a sitcom, yeah. an animated sitcom, a 22-minute animated sitcom, in five days. It's written, produced, it's sound, all of that animated, all done in like five days. It gets rid of writer's block because you, you don't have the luxury of any writer's block. It's not just that we're slackers, because I mean, we are that too. We are put everything off until the last possible minute. The quick turnaround time is the secret ingredient that enables South Park to be more topical than any other animated show where the typical turnaround is a glacial six months. So how do they pull this off? So the first thing we do is record voices. And Matt and Trey, they come in here and they pretty much do all the male voices. So we start with voices. It, it begins and you guys animate to the voices. Is that typical in animation? That's typical, yeah, everyone does that. Once the voice track is laid down, the artist in the storyboard room get to work. So this is our storyboard uh, room. These guys design all the characters and they do all the storyboards. So you kind of have a visual representation of the written script. And so what this will do, is we'll take this and we'll put this into an editing computer and we'll put the audio track that was recorded by Matt and Trey in the audio booth and it'll run simultaneously. So again, we get a visual representation of what the show is going to be. And then from there, we can start putting an animation into place. When we come back, it takes a lot of man hours and money to make something look this cheap. South Park is an Emmy-winning TV series and a blockbuster motion picture. But it started out as a primitive student film. Frosty killed Kitty! One thing co-creator Trey Parker didn't want to change from the original pilot was the homemade charm of his crude paper cutout characters. We have the equipment to do really incredible stuff if right. we wanted. Right. But, you know, we're really proud that South Park has its own look and people can see a few frames of South Park and be like, that's South Park. He's not kidding about that equipment. This is our render farm. Wow, how many processors are in here? There's about 300, there's over 300. I'm gonna say 340. What are these processors doing? When the animators are sitting there animating, what they do is they send their shots off to get rendered, and it goes through here. Rendering is turning a computer animation file into a finished shot. The software used to create those files is pretty impressive too. It's called Maya. Lead animator Jack explains how it works. It amazes me that you're using such a powerful, high-tech program for what comes off as a very simplistic animation style. True, a lot of people are surprised when they hear we use Maya. One of the looks that uh, Matt and Trey wanted was to maintain that look of the construction paper feel. With Maya, we actually scanned in the textures that they used when they did like The Spirit of Christmas and Frosty. And if you look at this up close, you can see that even though in wireframe it's just, you know, a simple shape, up close when it gets rendered out, it actually has the quality of the construction you can paper see this texture. texture, yeah. 
I also see that it looks like each character has like a drop shadow almost. Yeah, exactly. Maya simulates a 3D environment, right down to creating the tiny shadows a piece of construction paper would cast. You can see that Maya is actually casting a shadow, a light-driven shadow, off of Clyde's face onto this kid. I think it's Bradley. Maya also allows the animators to manipulate these drawings as if they were paper puppets. So the technical directors will assemble shots and put it all together, and then when it's delivered to an animator, it'll look a lot like this, but nothing in the shot will be moving. Maya gives the animator an overhead view that shows dozens of layers of characters and the individual elements of each one. So all these green lines are the different layers. That's just a, like one of them would be his hair, the piece that makes up his hair. What we have here is, this is a uh, character Bryden. He's got uh, our standard South Park mouth pack. So it has all the different mouths for dialogue and for expression, including eyebrows. All the characters have the same mouth pack, is that what you call it? Yeah, there's a standard mouth pack that we have. I've seen how they used to make the characters talk, switching out tiny paper mouths to match up with the dialogue. I think this might be a little bit easier. Nothing says worried like a number eight mouth. So Maya saves time, and these guys need every second they can get, since they usually have only a few days to create an episode. Other studios that are doing 20 minutes in four to six months, six to six months to a year. Do you get any sleep during that time? It's very surreal. My mom will walk in and she just starts freaking out, you know, and she sees, she's <laughs> like, I don't like that look on your face and I don't like to see Butters looking like that. You like, just you, look you, like you're about to vomit Yeah, everyone at just any looks, moment. yeah, just shaking and sick and pasty and coffee and, uh, you know, so it's, it's not a good thing. These guys put themselves through hell for your amusement. I have to ask about the election episode because it literally aired the day after the election. Yeah. Sasha and Malia, you have earned the new puppy that's coming with us to the White House. We will name him Sparkles. He's so awesome! He's so perfect and awesome! I, I know you guys crank these out and it's like insane, but how did you do that? Right around October, 10th of October, Vegas had Obama at like eight to one in, in October. And I was like, okay. It's like, Let's just start the Obama. It's eight to one, dude. I mean, if we, he's gonna win. He's gonna win. On Tuesday night, right. we're all sitting there and we're doing, because I knew I was gonna watch his speech and put some stuff from his speech into the show. Okay. Right around five o'clock when results started coming in on the East Coast, there was really this like, okay, McCain, McCain, McCain gets this, McCain gets that, McCain gets this. We're like, oh crap. There was <laughs> like, that moment. There was definitely just... like, okay, now what do we do? And luck, but it, it, it worked out. I mean, Vegas is rarely wrong, so. Stan, Kyle, Cartman, Kenny, and Butters aren't the only kick-butt team to come out of South Park Studios. 